Here we'll discover a formula for generating infinitely many Pythagorean triples. But first, for the Pythagorean triple with legs of length 8 and 15, what's the hypotenuse? Exactly, the hypotenuse is 17, because 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. So 8, 15, and 17 are a Pythagorean triple because they're integers, or whole numbers, and they form the sides of a right triangle, satisfying the Pythagorean theorem. Now suppose you have a right triangle, and its two legs have integer lengths a and b. Let's see if we can find right triangles where the hypotenuse is exactly one more than one of the legs, so it's b plus 1. If b is an integer, then b plus 1 must also be an integer, right? So let's see if we can find integer values of a and b where a, b, and b plus 1 satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. In other words, a squared plus b squared equals b plus 1 squared. Now, b plus 1 squared is the same thing as b plus 1 times b plus 1. Try multiplying these two binomials to expand this product, and be sure to combine like terms. Excellent! So b plus 1 squared equals b squared plus 2b plus 1. So let's plug this back into the equation up here. Notice that we have b squared on both sides, so to simplify, let's subtract b squared from both sides. On the left, that leaves us with a squared, and on the right, we have 2b plus 1. So if we can find whole number values of a and b that satisfy this equation, then a, b, and b plus 1 will be a Pythagorean triple. Now let's take a closer look at the right side of this equation, 2b plus 1. Given that b is an integer, this whole expression, 2b plus 1, is it even or odd? Try plugging in a few values of b to figure this out. Right, for any integer b, 2b is always even, and then 2b plus 1 is always odd. So if the right side of this equation is odd, that means the left side must also be odd, right? You can't have an even number equaling an odd number. So does that mean a should be odd or even? Well, if you take an even number and square it, you'll always get another even number. And if you take an odd number and square it, you'll always get another odd number. So for a squared to be odd, that means a itself must also be odd. Okay, so let's try plugging in some odd values for a and see what happens. Let's keep track of our results in this table. So if a is odd, let's try a equals 1. If you plug in 1 for a in this equation, then you'll find that b equals 0. And if b is 0, then b plus 1 equals 1. Hmm, these three values do satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, because 1 squared plus 0 squared equals 1 squared. But you can't have a side length of 0. Let's try this again with another odd value for a. When a equals 3, use this equation to solve for b. Nicely done. So when a is 3, a squared is 9, which means b equals 4. So then what's b plus 1? Right, b plus 1 equals 5. Hey, it worked! We have a Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5. Let's try a few more odd values for a, 5, 7, and 9. Use this formula to fill out the remaining sides of the Pythagorean triples in this table. Nicely done! So we have 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 9, 40, 41. Sure enough, these are all Pythagorean triples where the hypotenuse is one longer than one of the legs. And you can keep plugging in larger and larger odd integers for a to get more triples. So you can see that there are infinitely many Pythagorean triples out there. So then another question you might ask is how you would find all of them, because this list is missing some, like 8, 15, 17, and 20, 21, 29, where the hypotenuse is not exactly one more than one of the legs.
It turns out that thousands of years ago, the Greek mathematician Euclid came up with a way to list all the Pythagorean triples. According to Euclid's formula, you should first pick positive integers m and n, where m is greater than n. So let's make a list with some small values for m and n. m could be 2 and n could be 1. And we can also try 3 and 1, 3 and 2, and 4 and 1. So great, we have a few examples where m and n are positive integers and m is greater than n. Now Euclid's formula says that m squared minus n squared, 2 times m times n, and m squared plus n squared will form a Pythagorean triple. We won't be proving this here, but let's make sure it works. When m is 2 and n is 1, m squared minus n squared is 4 minus 1, or 3. 2mn is 2 times 2 times 1, or 4, and m squared plus n squared is 4 plus 1, or 5. Yes, so we have 3, 4, 5, the first Pythagorean triple. Try plugging these values of m and n into these expressions up here and solve for the remaining Pythagorean triples in this table. Right, so when m is 3 and n is 1, we have 8, 6, and 10. That's actually a multiple of 3, 4, 5, so you get some repeats using Euclid's formula. When m is 3 and n is 2, you get 5, 12, 13. And when m is 4 and n is 1, you get 15, 8, 17, which is a Pythagorean triple we couldn't get from our earlier method. So as you can see, there are a few different ways to generate lists of Pythagorean triples, and there are infinitely many triples out there. So go see if you can find some more. Let's start with a right triangle, and suppose its legs have lengths of 8 and 15. Try using the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the hypotenuse, or click down here to review. Excellent! So according to the Pythagorean theorem, you should take the lengths of the legs, square them, add them together, and then take the square root. The square root of 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17, so that's the length of the hypotenuse. Now in this lesson, we'll be using the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between any two points in the coordinate plane. So first, go ahead and select the point 3, 1, or click over here to review. Right, here's 3, 1. Next, select the point negative 1, negative 2. Great, so here's negative 1, negative 2. So let's try calculating the distance between these two points. First, what's the horizontal distance between the points, meaning the length of this segment over here? Exactly, the horizontal distance between these two points is 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, what's the vertical distance between these points? So what's the length of this line segment here? Excellent. So given that the horizontal distance is 4 and the vertical distance is 3, try using this right triangle here to calculate the distance between negative 1, negative 2 and 3, 1. In other words, what's the length of this hypotenuse? So in general, if you have two points in the coordinate plane with coordinates x1, y1 and x2, y2, you can draw a right triangle to figure out the distance between them. The horizontal distance is the difference between the x-coordinates, so that's x2 minus x1. And the vertical distance is the difference between the y-coordinates, so that's y2 minus y1. So then which of these choices over here is the correct distance formula? Inside the square root, should you be adding the squares, subtracting them, or multiplying them? Precisely, so this is the distance formula. If you ever want to find the distance between two points in the coordinate plane, square the differences between their x-coordinates and y-coordinates, add those squares together, and then take the square root of the whole thing. Now let's put the distance formula to work. Try using it to calculate the exact distance between the points negative 5, 3 and 7, negative 2. Feel free to ask for a hint if you get stuck. 
And to check your work, you can use this interactive over here. You can drag around these two points, see the horizontal and vertical differences, and how they relate to the actual distance between the points. And by the way, because you're squaring these numbers in the distance formula, that means it still works when these differences are negative. OK, so give this question a shot. Excellent, so the distance between these points is exactly 13. Their horizontal difference is 12, their vertical difference is negative 5, and the square root of 12 squared plus negative 5 squared is 13. Now because there's a square root in this formula, that means you'll often calculate distances that don't come out to be whole numbers like 13. So next, try calculating the exact distance between the points negative 7 comma 4 and 3 comma 0. This time it's fine to write your answer as a square root. Great, so let's finish up this lesson with another sample problem. Suppose these three points, negative 1 comma negative 4, negative 1 comma 2, and 3 comma 2 are the three vertices of a triangle. What's the perimeter of this triangle? If you get stuck, click down here and we'll figure this out together.